Right, welcome back. We're in the Free State and we're starting to wrap up our conversation here. Social cohesion, nation building uh, has been on the agenda. And again, as I said before the break, it's not just a Free State issue, it's a national issue. And I dare say an African Union issue as well that we need to explore. Um, a question has come through on Twitter from Ashraf Dokrat, who says, um, Chapter 9 institutions have a role to play yet are not referred to in the National Development Plan on nation building. Why is that? Are they irrelevant, MEC? <clears throat> well, you'll realize that um, our government has taken a, a, an approach, even from the beginning of um, the development of the, the National Development Plan, to include all its citizens different political parties and everybody. Um, so um, we do not seek to ignore chapter nine institutions mm. in the development of our country. They are very much part of our development. Um, the person who has tweeted uh, must know that. Mm. In practice, practical terms, we work together to ensure that our country is a better country in the long term. Okay, all right, so let's go to, uh, is this Tato uh, on table number seven? Table number seven, Tato. I um, can't quite read your surname, so you're gonna have to help me there. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Tato Mudeling. Uh, my question is that, uh, what programs are there to promote the social cohesion in the local society? If so, can it be more visible and we as youth can take part in promoting that? Can we hit hard in making this, uh, our community a rainbow nation? I believe in uh, a rainbow nation uh, society. As ENSA, we also promote that. So I would like to be part of that. Me personally, I would like to be one of those programs that actually promote the social cohesion and nation building uh, programs. Thank you. My question is directed to you in Dada Life. Okay. <laughs> Dada Life. <laughs> well, uh, I, I've seen a, a whole range of programs, um, not only in government, but uh, I think sports has played a critical role in social cohesion. You have seen during the 2010 World Cup, when you go to the stadium, you don't find only black people. Mm -hmm. You find our diversity in action. And when people go to the stadium, they don't need to be mobilized like uh, it is the case in politics. They just walk to the stadium because football is good. When people go to other activities, as, as we might have seen, um, it has been out of their own you know, love for entertainment. When you go to park offs and you have seen uh, the things that are happening, the creativity, what young people can do, uh, you'd see that there is a lot that is happening in terms of social cohesion. And what is more critical is that young people are at the center of social cohesion, and people do not know that. Uh, if you watch television, the people who produce, uh, you know, the entertainment on Generation, uh, on Easy Buyer and elsewhere, majority of them are young people. Mm. Uh, if you watch football, uh, uh, it's young people who play football. Uh, everywhere else, uh, and, and I'm sure that uh, young people, as they have always referred, uh, as if we are reckless and all that, it is not the case, um, but I think maybe we need, to, we need to twist these things and take advantage of saying, how can we use social cohesion to advance economic freedom in our lifetime? Because we cannot always talk about cohesive society uh, that is not economically free. I'm sure there's a whole lot of successes politically that has happened in our country, and we still have to now advance to a radical economic situation. So we have to find a way of saying, what level can we then utilize social cohesion programs in our country to then advance economic freedom for the youth in particular? Yeah, you wanna add? I would like to add. <laughs> I would like to add and say to the youth, take initiative. 
Don't wait for government to call you. I've seen young people who've done great work uh, building the nation, young people who started businesses and came up with solutions that are amazing. Last week there was a young, two young people who were talking about uh, school bags that have solar pan, uh, thing on, on them. And that is creative. That's caring about your own country. But theorists in political science will tell you that you are the government, each one of us. We elected representatives because we cannot all govern. And we delegated our power and our authority. What we did not delegate is accountability. So all of us are still accountable to hold the government accountable, but also to make our country work. Okay. Um, and I want us to, to, you know, as we're running out of time, June is Youth Month, and I always get a sense especially when there's service delivery protests, you name it, it's always the young people that are there. It's always the youth that are there. And I'm just wondering if we're not taking the situation as urgently and as seriously as we need to, um, because each year um, a million kids are coming through the system, they're leaving the school system, some, uh, some along the way, and they're doing nothing. A lot of them are, have got no opportunities. We can't keep having this buildup of young people um, and whenever they get an opportunity to express themselves, they do. What do we do in Youth Month to address a very young population in South Africa at the moment? Your thoughts? Let's start with you, Tate Life. Well, let me volunteer, Peter. Uh, Look, during this, this uh, June month, uh, we are doing youth in rural uh, areas, uh, youth and uh, rural development. We do skills development, we deal with education. There's a whole range of activities which have already been planned for this uh, June month. And um, some of what we are doing there is to actually ignite serious discussions. Uh, discussions that are there among young people, but people do not know about them. For an example, we are, we are asking a question as the South African Youth Council, as we engage in the question of education, to say, um, how many young people do, do know that uh, they can actually drop out of school uh, at grade nine and opt for a TVET college uh, instead of staying there until grade 12? Many young people think that I must stay here until I do metric and all that. Uh, whereas uh, if you know what you, you want to do in life in terms of uh, you know, the approach in terms of your, your, your skills and all that, you can actually drop out. We are asking this very question that there's a whole lot of young people who are working elsewhere, um, and they are not taking advantages of opportunities created by government. I'm sure MEC Tatemacher will agree with me that young people do not take advantage of the recognition of prior learning. You might have been working, and you are working as a communicator in government, but you have studied something else. Uh, why don't you go to the department and submit your work there and, and receive certificate? You can receive certificate until to master's degree uh, uh, by, by producing your, 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 your work and, 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 and uh, achieving through recognition of prior learning. And these are the, the type of opportunities which we are saying we must avail to the youth. We are not only talking about rallies and all that. Of course, young people must be entertained. You, you, don't, you don't come too serious here with us. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it must be entertained. We need, we need all these things, as Tswana. We need Chomide. Uh, we need uh, Maseven. We need all these people. We need them there. But we say, while we are being entertained, let this very important information be made available to the youth so that the youth can take advantage of, of opportunities available to them. All right. And unfortunately, <laughs> thank you very much for... Unfortunately, as, as, as always happens, uh, we've run out of time and we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you very much indeed uh, to my panelists, uh, um, um, MEC Msevenzi Zwane, Vice Rector, Dr. Choice Maketa, Professor Andre Keat, and Ntate Life Mugoni. Thank you very much indeed for your thoughts. Yeah.
and uh, sharing your, your, your ideas with us. Uh, to you at home, thank you so much for joining us. And my audience here at the venue in uh, Bloemfontein, thanks very much indeed. Have a great one, everyone. And watch out for the next uh, few. I think we've got a big one with the N. YDA uh, as well to, to, to look at uh, um, uh, Youth Month as well. Okay, so have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you the next time. Take care. Bye bye. Right. Oh, thank you so.